I'm in the reloading room and I'm about to start loading or load development using Berger 220X hybrids for F-Class matches. I shoot in F-Class matches, as I mentioned in my other videos, more specifically FTR. And in FTR, we can only shoot 223 or 308, and I shoot 308. So I'll be using these uh, projectiles for 308 loads and using Lapua Palma Brass. Now this Lapua Palma Brass is hard to come by. Uh, as I have mentioned in another video, and many of you already know, that Lapua has suspended making this Lapua Palma Brass. Lapua Palma is Lapua 308 brass with small rifle primers. Uh, and Lapua has suspended making this for a while, so it's very scarce. I have some, a good handful of it from uh, that I've shot in another rifle that I'm going to put in my, uh, use in my new rifle. So when I originally started load development, I just grabbed some of this, sized it down, kept sizing it until it fit in the chamber so the bolt would close. The bolt was never just drop closed, but I thought it was okay. And lo and behold, I went out and shot the first shot and the brass got stuck in the chamber. So the problem is that this is uh, this is this brass here is is been fire formed. I think it's been it's been shot four or five times in another rifle. So I'm making this video to document my solution so that in the future I can look back at what I was doing in the past. And since I'm making the video, I thought that I would share it on YouTube. So this this video is really just my process. It's not how you should do it or what you should do. It's just simply the process that I went through. Let me go set up the camera at the rifle and I'll show you what the problem is. I'm over at the rifle now and set up and I've got the firing pin removed from the bolt. I removed the firing pin from the bolt so that the bolt now when it closes it'll drop freely. I need it to drop freely when I've got a, a, a sized piece of brass in the chamber. I don't want this to, I can't have any resistance when I am closing the bolt. That way I won't get a stuck round. If it closes freely, I won't get a stuck round after I shoot the rifle. And that's exactly what happened before. So I was only thinking that what was stopping this was the shoulder itself uh, needing to be bu bumped back as is usually the case after you fire a round. However, in this case, the, right, the other rifle has a larger chamber and this is the, I don't even know if the shoulder has hit the chamber yet, but it's, I'm getting a lot of uh, resistance already and I can't push the, the, the firing, uh, the bolt any further closed. It won't let me. And I can't even get to the point where I can push down and force it closed. So it's, the case in there is stuck already. It's just very slightly, but it's, it's already stuck. I've got to tap the bolt to get it out. So, as I mentioned before, what I did was just kept bumping this shoulder back, thinking that that was doing it, and sizing it further and further. Um, and then I finally got it in there so I could close the bolt. Uh, it still had a little bit of, I was able to close the bolt, but there was still a little bit of uh, resistance here in the bolt. But I went ahead and loaded up my rounds anyway. I didn't know, really have a good idea of what I was doing. And then I, the first shot, the case got stuck. So. How did I fix that? Let me move back over to the reloading bench. Okay, I'm back over at the bench. And in order to combat the case getting stuck uh, after it was sized, I thought that I was just getting uh, really bad clickers. A clicker is, uh, many of you probably that have shot for a while, um, and, and you, when you re reload the same uh, brass over and over, the, no the full sizing, the full size sizing die comes down, but it doesn't go down far enough and down toward the base, it doesn't get, the, the, cart, the brass doesn't get sized. So after a few, after a few firings, uh, cycles of firings and reloading, uh, you'll notice that when you're lifting the bolt, it'll kind of get stiff right up at the top. And in order to get it open, you're gonna have to pop it up and then it makes a clicking sound when you finally do get it to open. Those are, those are referred to as clickers. And I thought that's what I had with this brass and that's, that was happening in my new rifle. I was just getting a clicker. So 
what did, what what would you do to solve the problem of a clicker? I have a uh, Cortina Precision uh, mandrel die. This is actually a mandrel made to as a mandrel die. However, the bottom um, sizes a little bit, and it corrects the clickers. It just sizes the the bottom of the case a little bit. Uh, this is a mandrel die. So what I did was after I sized this brass, I took the mandrel out of the Cortina Precision uh, die and then uh, ran that through and sized it, put it back in the rifle and still it would not, um, it, I could still feel it. I knew there was a, the, the shoulder needed to be bumped, but I could still feel it, um, a lot of uh, resistance to closing even before the shoulder hit the end of the uh, chamber. So the next step I needed to do, or the next thing, or the, my, my last resort was to get a small base sizing die. And a small base is used to, it's, it sizes smaller, the, the entire case smaller, and it sizes, I think, further down uh, toward the base of the cartridge that way, or the case that way, it, will size it down to minimum dimensions. And then once doing that, it should fit. The, I use the Redding body die. I had to order this just for this purpose. It's a, uh, a small base body die. It's really the same. It looks very much this, exactly the same actually as the, this is just a Redding uh, body die, just a standard body die, I guess you would call it. And the two look identical, except that one says, has the writing on it that says SB for small base. This one is just says 308 Winchester body die. So I put this in and then I have, uh, as I mentioned in my other videos as well, I use Redding uh, competition shell, shell holders, I think they're called. Yep, Redding competition shell holder set to set my bump. And I started with number 10. And then I tried to chamber that. It chambered all the way, except, I, and I could tell, it went right into the chamber, except, and it hit the end of the chamber, but I couldn't push down on the handle the bolt handle because it was the shoulder bump. I needed to have the shoulder bump. The shoulder, the base to shoulder measurement was too long. So then I just simply went down to the number eight shell holder, did the same thing, did not work. I went to the number six shell holder and I sized this piece of brass with it and I checked the in my, I measured before and after, and after it came out of the sizing die, the shoulder bump, or the shoulders were way up here at almost five thousandths above, you know, plus five thousandths. Now it's down to just about zero, maybe a half a thousandth. Uh, you can pick that up on the, uh, about half a thousandth, maybe just above zero. Uh, shoulder bump using the RCBS gauge and let me take you back to the rifle um, before I go over to the rifle I just wanted to point out a couple of things on these these cases here this is the one that's been sized not only through the full length sizing die but also the small base die I run it through the full length sizing die first it begins to size the body but uh, more importantly it runs the it sizes the neck. It runs the um, bushing, uh, it's a bushing die, and it, and it sizes the neck. I'll go back and run a mandrel into the neck, but that's the, the first step in uh, sizing the neck. This, uh, um, the, so this is a bit run through the full length sizing die as well as the small base die. This one has just run been run through the sizing die a full length sizing die and it sized the neck. 
This one has yet to be sized. This is uh, just a piece of fire brass that's been deep primed and cleaned. It has yet to be sized. You can, I can tell the difference in um, where, the, 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 where the small base sizing die is doing the work. So if you can notice this, there's a subtle difference here after just the full length sizing die. This, this brass here is a little bit more shiny where it's been through the die and the die has kind of scraped off some of that dirt. And this is where it sized the die, uh, has sized the um, case. Also, you can see a little tiny mark there on the neck, whereas there's hardly any mark here, um, sorry, on the shoulder, the base shoulder junction. There's no mark there whatsoever. There's a little mark here, but on the small base, the a case that has been sized in the small base, not only is it a little bit more cleaner, meaning that the die has scraped off a little bit more of the oxidation or the dirt and sized the case a little bit more in this area, in the body area, but also it has hit that shoulder neck, um, sorry, the body shoulder junction. You can see that little bright line where it's just clean the brass uh, there. It's done a lot of work right there. And I think that in, it was really this area, not so much the base, but I think it was this area that was, that had expanded so much in the other chamber. So the new gun has a much tighter chamber uh, up there in the neck area. All right, so now I'll go over to the uh, rifle. Okay, back over at the rifle. So now I've got the small base die or I've, I've got the brass that's been sized with a small base die and goes right in. The firing pin or the uh, bolt handle just drops right down. So now that I've got this uh, small base sized, I'm able to continue off my load development. I should have begun this way. I should have known better because I've read before. It, this has just never happened to me. I've not had a problem going back and forth. I, I haven't had a lot of 308 rifles, so. I have never had a problem going back and forth between the two rifles with, with the same brass. And, and, and for each of the other rifles that I've owned, I, it used its own brass. I never tried to fire other brass in it. So that's a lesson learned for me. Um, if I'm going to shoot brass in a, another rifle, then I need to small base size it and um, I can avoid getting it stuck. Well, that wraps this video up. I, Hope you've enjoyed it and I hope to see you next time.